In this episode, I will prove that the number E is irrational. And we will prove this by alternating series. We will use some nice properties of alternating series. And if you don't know these properties, no problem. Just check out the links to the videos I have in the description box. It tells you everything you need to know. So what is the number E? There it is. I'm sure you've seen this number before. E is after Euler, named in honor of him. Well, you look at these digits and they seem to be not repeating. And uh, so you think, yeah, it looks irrational, looks very irrational. But have a look at this number, F. Is this rational or irrational? Yeah, it looks really irrational. <laughs> Nothing is repeating. But it turns out that this is uh, a rational number, 1,999 over 647. And uh, the secret here is, is in what I'm not telling you over here, these three dots and these three dots. It doesn't really matter what these digits are, even if they are repeating, or if even if they are all zero, no matter how many of them they are, the magic and the secret lies in what is happening here. So you can't really just look at a number and guess if it's rational or irrational, if it's a non-terminating decimal like this. We have to use some kind of clever mathematical proof, and the alternating series proof is very clever. We need a mathematical definition for E, and we can get that from the power series of the exponential function. So that's e to the x is 1 over 0 factorial. I'll, I'll write it out very explicitly like this. 1 over 1 factorial x to the 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed plus and so on. And so you see what we have here is k is 1 to inf oh, k is 0 to infinity. We're very used to writing starting with 1, our series. All right, k is 0 to infinity, 1 over k factorial x power k. Now, notice the following thing. The series starts at k equals 0, and this is going to cause us some troubles. Uh, nothing serious, but uh, it's just annoying because we are used to counting series beginning uh, with 1. At least uh, I did in all my <laughs> previous videos about alternating series. All right, so let's put a 1 in here, and we have this 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial uh, plus 1 over 3 factorial plus and so on and so on. Okay, so there's a good mathematical definition of E. Now, suppose E is rational. Okay, so E is M over N. Then 1 over E has got to be N over M. And the two imply each other. So E is rational if and only if 1 over E is rational. And the other way around, if uh, one of these is not rational, then the other one isn't rational either. So what we can do is instead of working with e, we can work with can work with one over e or e minus one. And why do we want to do that? Well, because if we put in minus one here into this series, we get an alternating series. And as we saw in previous videos, alternating series has some beautiful properties, and we can exploit those properties to get a nice proof of irrationality of e power minus 1, or 1 over e. Okay, so let's plug that into here, and what do we get? We get e minus 1, e power minus 1 is 1 minus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial minus, and so on. 
Okay, so you see the problem with this is the following. Because we started at k is zero, we end up with this issue here that the evens are positive and the odds are negative. And this is the opposite as the convention that we have in the usual theory of alternating series that I did in the vids. But this is very easy to fix. So I will show you a trick by which this can be handled very shortly. So we're used to the alternating series having the even terms negative, but we can fix that, no problem. Okay, now let's look at the partial sums just for fun. Let's look at partial sums for E and E inverse. Partial sums of E are one, one plus one, one plus one plus one half, and so on and so on. For one over E, partial sums are one, and this one, this is interesting, this one is zero. Okay, that's no problem. Uh, and so on. And let's plot these things just to get a grip on what's going on, what this all looks like. Here are my E partial sums. This is uh, S zero. We got to start with zero because the uh, the uh, series begins with K zero. So that, th that throws off our thinking a little bit, but You'll see, it'll, it's easy to fix, S2 and so on and so on. So it, it rapidly comes up to the value, numerical value here, and really quickly converges. Here are the partial sums for one over E. Okay, so this is S0, this is S1, and so on. So I don't like indexing things beginning with zero. Uh, I want, um, S1 to mean one term. <laughs> I don't want to start with S0. And I don't want to start with K is zero either. So this is this is K is zero. There's only one term to sum here at zero. So I don't want to do that. And plus my odds are at the bottom now and my evens are on the top. So that's I'm gonna fix this. Okay, it's very easy to fix. But it's interesting to see how it works. The alternating series rapidly converges to uh, 1 over E over here. Now let's see how we can fix that k equals 0 problem. Let's start by writing our uh, infinite series for 1 over E. What we can do is uh, factor out a minus sign here. And we get this, 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial minus. Wow, this is exactly what we want. 1 minus, let me call this G. Now this G here, this is exactly the kind of alternating series that we've been studying. So uh, it begins at, uh, we can say it begins with 1 Okay, it's uh, easy to write it in the same form that we had before, minus 1 power k plus 1, okay, the, uh, and 1 over k factorial. So the odds are now positive. We can start counting from 1, and the evens are negative. Very, very nice. So this is 1 minus g. Let's look at these terms a little bit more. A is 1 over k factorial, a k. So we have the three conditions uh, for alternating series properties. The first one was a k is positive. All of them are positive. Second one was that the a k's are monotone decreasing. All right, monotone, monotone decreasing. And the third condition, if you recall, was that limit a k as k goes to infinity, this limit is zero. We need to have these three conditions, and then we can apply all of our theorems about uh, alternating series. And it, it's all true for this. And uh, all of the other things we proved, that the even partial sums are below g and the odd partial sums are above g, that all holds now because we have it in the right beautiful canonical kind of form. Okay, so now it's sufficient to prove the following, that g is irrational. Why is that? Because you can't have 
irrational plus rational giving you a rational, you see? So as an exercise, I want you to prove this. It's very easy to prove it. Just think about fractions and stuff. Very easy. So, okay, because of that, if G is not in Q, so I can write it like this. Let's say G is not in Q. Well, this is in Q. This is rational. One is rational. So we have rational plus or minus irrational, plus or minus, then this must be not in Q, if so. So all we need to do now is prove that G is not in Q and we have everything. And that turns out to be very, very interesting. But first, just to get our bearings straight, let's plot these partial sums of the G uh, and G is here. This is now S1. You see it starts at K is 1. This is S2, S3, and so on. So the odds, odd partial sums with odd number of terms, they are above G. And the evens, S4, they are below G. Okay, we proved all of that in the previous alternating series videos. It just so happens that G is 1 minus 1 over E. You can figure that out. And the even, let's write it like this, even sums, even partial sums are greater, or less than, sorry, less than G, and the odd partial sums are greater than G, as you can see here, but we proved all of that. So now let's prove that G is not in Q. The odd partial sums are greater than G, that means that we subtract, if we subtract these two, S2 and minus one, minus G, this is greater than zero. And that means uh, S2N minus one minus G is actually just equal to S2N minus one minus G. So now we can apply the approximation theorem. This is the approximation theorem for alternating series. Um, this is one of the jewels of alternating series that we proved in the last video. So if we have an alternating series, how good is an appro approximation SK if we truncate all the terms after K? Well, you take S minus SK, the, the difference, the, the error in doing that truncation, that's less than the next term, AK plus one. So I can now estimate this here, this, Okay, S2n minus 1 minus g, this must be less than or equal to, to the next term. The next, the current term is 1 over 2n minus 1 factorial. That's the last term in this partial sum. So the next term in the series is 1 over 2n factorial like this. And let's not forget this has to be bigger than 0 as we showed here. Now. Multiply both sides by this factor here, 2n minus 1 factorial. Multiply all these sides, so I get 0 minus 2n minus 1 factorial times s2n minus 1 minus g, less than or equal to 2n minus 1 factorial over 2n factorial. So, okay, so all these... Uh, products cancel out I'm, and I'm only left here with 1 over 2n. I have that. So let's write that neatly there. Very nice. Now the first thing to notice is that this product here is always an integer. Why is that? Let's see. Let's write the whole thing out. 2n minus 1 factorial and this is multiplied by. So you see here I'm, when I multiply all of these terms, I get an integer because the factorial contains the denominator. And this is true even for the last one. Of course, the last one's going to be 1. So uh, that's very uh, interesting. So it's because of property of factorial Okay, that two factorial, two factorial di uh, divides two n minus one factorial when you know when n is a, a larger number, and three factorial div divides two n minus one factorial, and so on and so on. 
however many terms you have here. Each one of them will divide. Finally, uh, of course, 2n uh, minus 1 factorial divides 2n minus 1 factorial. <laughs> okay, so this is always true. It's always an integer. Now, we proceed by contradiction. So let's assume Let's assume g is a uh, rational number a, b. So g is rational, is in q, and you have a and b. Well, I can choose any n. Choose n is, let's say, b. Okay, so let's say b is some big denominator. Well, I can choose n as b. So what happens when I multiply these two? Now let's take these two here this times this. What do I get when I do 2n minus 1 factorial times g? So that's 2n minus 1 factorial times a over b. Okay, so I chose b. That's 2b minus 1 factorial over times a over b. Well, obviously here, this is a bigger than b. 2b minus 1. So b divides 2b minus 1 factorial. And so therefore, this product is an integer. So I can just choose some n that's sufficient to make this product an integer. And one such choice is like this. All right, so I'm free to choose any n in this approximation. And uh, the first part is always true. And so what we end up with is the following. We end up with this being an integer for some choice of n. All right. That's very interesting. And so if n is uh, greater than uh, uh, well, actually, n has to be 1 or greater, like this. So this actually is less than or equal to 1 half, which is less than 1, of course. So I end up with the following. 0, for some choice of n, 0 is less than some integer and it's strictly less than 1. Hmm. Well, that's absurd. There you go. That's an absurd contradiction. This is exactly the kind of thing that you expect to happen with proof by contradiction. You end up with something impossible. You can't have an integer that's strictly between 0 and 1. And so, g is not in q, and so e inverse is not in q, and so e is not in q. And there you go. I think this is a really amazing proof. It's something quite different than what, from what we're used to doing, especially um, in typical college mathematics. This has some very interesting reasoning which maybe you have never seen before. And it has beautiful exploitation of alternating series. So now you know why they make you study alternating series in college. It's it, because it leads to beautiful stuff like this. It's not just some topic somebody invented to torture you with. It's It leads to really nice mathematics like the proof that E is irrational. Well, that's it for today. I hope you like this proof. I hope you like this video. Please click like and subscribe and leave a comment. Tell me what you think of all of this. Tell me how you like this application of alternating series. And watch the other videos that I will put in the description box for the background material. Those are also interesting and contain really interesting mathematics. And I will see you next time.